We are in session 13 today and we'll look into the C sharp statements in this session and the statements in C sharp include uh, the statements overview there and uh, selection statements which is if, else, which cases and the uh, iteration statements such as do, for and arrays, uh, we'll see a single dimension array, multi dimension array and jagged arrays in this session. Okay, so let's kick off session 13. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, uh, the statements uh, in, the, in C sharp dot net. Um, so we will compare each of these uh, statements um, with the VB dot net also. So I have the uh, VB dot net code also on side by side so to see the comparison. So uh, as you know, wherever possible, I will try to bring in the VB dot net code also so that we have a side by side comparison. So, so sometimes if the program is too lengthy then uh, I uh, I won't put that uh, vb.net code there so we will focus on c -sharp .net, okay um, because the market outside uh, do ask for c -sharp, uh, at least 80% uh, of the market okay so there are still 20% of the market people will be asking for vb.net um, but still so we will cover as much as possible in uh, vb.net so these are pretty uh, statements are pretty simple things and very fundamental building blocks in the in the programming uh, world. So uh, most of you might, uh, whoever uh, have been uh, used to programming languages, so these are available in almost in any programming languages in a different form. So with the different syntax, um, functionally they mean same. Uh, today we will see the uh, stay uh, the uh, the C sharp .NET um, uh, statements uh, and also we'll compare them with the uh, VB .NET. Okay, so the first thing to go uh, is the uh, selection statements. Okay, uh, so the selection statements of uh, we have um, uh, statements are actually categorized into uh, six groups you know, and we'll. Uh, uh, go one by one. So the first uh, category is uh, the selection statements uh, under which we have two uh, statements whereas the uh, first one is if else. Um, so if you see on the left hand side you will see the um, topics under the main section. So the section statements is on the right hand side corner and on the left hand side we will walk through the um, uh, types within the same uh, uh, category. So the if and else if, um, if, else, else if in C sharp whereas uh, in VB.NET it's if, else, uh, else if and, and if. So if and else if is a pretty straightforward thing uh, need us to say. So if means uh, it, it has an expression that will be a, a condition. Uh, the condition can have any number of uh, um, um, bitwise operators within that which will uh, the finally results to a, a boolean boolean operation or boolean uh, output so you can have any kind of expression within the expression it can be a composite uh, expression where is two or more conditions you can have uh, and uh, the resulting could be a true or false so if the condition is true then the statement uh, one will be executed um, if not then the, it will go to the else part Okay, so if you see this um, square brackets open and close in normal syntax, um, that indicates that it's optional. Okay, so whenever it is uh, indicated with the um, uh, without those square uh, brackets, then it means it's mandatory. So that's a, a standard uh, a notation that goes around with, uh, with the syntax uh, when whenever you look at. Okay, so uh, in this uh, below example, we have a small uh, code um, which is demonstrating the uh, same thing. So uh, in C sharp dot net, it is a completely small case uh, if else if uh, else if has a space again uh, check with that uh, else and if has a space. That's means okay, uh, and uh, finally else part. So. Uh, it's pretty much like a conditional statement. So if this is successful, then do this. If this is uh, not, then it will go with the step-by-step uh, -step approach. The first statement will be um, checked. If the uh, evaluation of the uh, the, the expression he here, 
results to a true, then this part will be executed. And uh, uh, if this uh, is true, then it will not execute any one of these. So it's going to uh, uh, get out of the if condition. So pretty much uh, at a given point within your if else block, uh, only one uh, true st only one statement will be executed. So remaining all will not be executed. So based on the option that you want to check, um, you can uh, write an if and else condition and do it. Okay. So in similarly uh, in uh, VB dot net, so it's uh, pretty much the same um, example, same scenario here. Um, so the only the syntax wise uh, the keywords are a little different uh, here uh, we would is more like English language and it follows the capitalization uh, uh, with the keywords uh, if has a I, I as a capital and else if again is a single word E as a capital and I as a capital all the syllables are capitalized and else again E is capital and end if so everything that starts with uh, something um, something it will have an end and if uh, uh, pretty much end statement for the block uh, and similarly if you see in vb.net if you see sub has a end sub so on uh, okay so that's a pretty simple state uh, example so in this example I'm trying to cover even the uh, casting if you look at the first um, thing so this is a car C which is a data type which takes a single character and we're actually reading from the command line and we're actually type casting whatever is entered to a cat here. So in C sharp, this is the cast operation. Uh, we need to see this in a couple of examples. So within brackets and end brackets, you uh, declare uh, you put any type there. Uh, you can actually put any int or any value type that you can put or any reference type as well you can put uh, and give the value on the right hand side. And the right hand side value will be type casted, that means converted to the type that is specified on the left hand side and uh, since the variable here C is of type car so the, the whatever input is coming in is converted to a car so that means a single value uh, if you yeah if you try to put more than a single character on the command line and this will result in an error okay so uh, we will play it safe because we are not yet there for uh, exception handling so similarly, uh, in uh, vb.net, um, CAD uh, has a different uh, conversion operators. So the casting is not done the same way it is done in C-sharp because that's specific to C-sharp. So vb.net has a couple of uh, implicit methods that are available to you can convert a given. Um, um, so there are multiple ways to conversions and this is one of the way where I'm using CAD W to uh, convert the uh, respective input value to a character here. So this example is pretty much if you see uh, what, what it's trying to do is uh, uh, we are trying to get uh, uh, a, a input value from the command line and then we're checking if uh, this is an upper which is an upper case or not. So these are the various methods available in the CAR um, um, uh, CAR uh, type and the CAR type has um, these implicit members available. These are pretty much a static type which you can use without creating instance of this. So if you remember uh, static members can be accessed directly with by the name of the type rather than the instance variable. Okay so these are static types or static members which you can access directly using the type name and uh, yes here you are checking if it is lower then execute this the character is lower you're going to show it out and and if it is a digit that means if it is a number then you're going to uh, call, uh, ex execute this line of statement so the character is a number and the similarly if none of the above then we're going to say that uh, the character is not an alphanumeric that means if, if it is a special characters then it's going to uh, say that so we'll just uh, demonstrate um, this code. So yes, yeah, so once you download this source code, you will see a C Sharp project and a VB dot and project. Um, so uh, if you are using the uh, Visual Studio Expr Express edition, then um, you need to actually uh, download the um, the whole set, uh, wherein you can 
run the vb.net and also csharp.net. Um, so if you have only C sharp, then uh, this solution might give you an error when you open it. But still, that's fine. So it might not uh, load the vb.net project. Uh, in that case, this will say unavailable or unloadable or something. Um, in that case, you can ignore that. So you can still go ahead and uh, run, or you can just right click and uh, remove this project completely, okay, in your local. And uh, yeah, you can concentrate only on the C sharp. Either way, it's fine. So we will see, uh, we will execute both the codes, uh, okay. So, okay, so we were looking at if else, okay, which is, okay, good. So the, this is the same code that we have on the slides. So I'm going to run this. So another another, another good point here uh, to un, um, highlight, I will just show you after the demo. Um, so I just hit enter and then uh, I add a breakpoint there. So the character is uppercase. So it actually, um, this part of the uh, core block uh, made successful, uh, true. And that's when it went through this statement. And after that, none of the other statements got ex um, executed. So, so if you uh, want to refresh the debugging option, so I, we can add a debug here and then a breakpoint there and uh, uh, run it. And uh, you need to do F10 to uh, next line. So, uh, so it's going to wait for user to key in. So I'll say S, capital S, and hit enter. And now, um, so the value uh, it received inside C. I can right click and say quick watch. So if you see the car uh, S and it's representing a number. So the number is uh, the ASCII value of capital S. If you remember the char character set that we were referred when we were um, talking about the data types. So this is a uh, ASCII value of uh, character capital S. Uh, so the car is again a numeric type if you remember. So it's uh, pretty much like a numeric type uh, handling a characters, a single characters again. So that if you see the number and the associated string there. So when you read it, you will get only the capital S. So it's checking if it is a number, then uh, it is upper, then uh, this is evaluated to true. We can also check that uh, by selecting that whole part and right clicking and say quick watch. So if you see uh, the resultant is a true value, which is of time Boolean. Another way to check this is again, you have an immediate window. So as I mentioned, so question mark and uh, say car is upper, then it says true. So if you want to evaluate uh, here itself, um, so is upper C, uh, in that case I can also put, um, say small p. So let's see. So p does not exist in the current context. Okay, so I'll pass it as a character. So it's a false. So it's upper is returning a false. So I can, uh, so the, this is the power of uh, immediate window where I can um, check um, almost literally execute the statement. So, so in this case I say is lower than it is true, so, so on. So this is a, just trying to recap on the debugging options available. So whoever um, are used to it or not used to it, just to re recap on those debug options. Okay, so this is all about um, uh, the if and else. Yeah, the in, this one key point that need to be remembered when we're doing this in especially applicable only for C sharp. Um, so since we have a single line statement here, uh, it is fine. Uh, you don't need to actually open and uh, close with the curly bracelet uh, which defines the block. Okay, so you need to add these uh, curly bracelets uh, when you have more than one statement uh, under your uh, the conditional block. Okay, so in this case I'm adding the uh, these blocks. Okay, and uh, run this again. I'll say number this time, nine. Oh, right point. Okay, 
Okay, I'll put a number there and hit enter. So the character is a number. So it satisfied the is digit um, um, condition of the or if and else block. So we'll see the VB dot and code also. Uh, so these are all uh, uh, basic C sharp semantics that we need to. Oops, I need to actually undo this because both the projects are under one solution. So if one of the project is not um, compiled, then the other one also will not. So okay, so I need to first set the startup project to the given project. Okay, that's the first thing you need to do because at a given point you can run only one project. So within this, I have a if and else block. Um, so the difference, if you carefully observe, uh, in um, C sharp project, I was always always I'm doing the commenting the uh, the static main method uh, to keep only one of the static main method uh, available, right? So otherwise the compiler is going to uh, creep saying that um, you have multiple main uh, entry points. When VB dot net when it comes, so there's nothing like uh, void main. So it's uh, you can have any number of sub mains. In other words, VB dot net sub main under a module uh, represents the entry point for that application, and you can have uh, any number of uh, uh, sub mains actually. So in this case, if I uncomment this, it really not going to crib. I compile it, which is good. Okay. And uh, in this case, I have another uh, submain, and here I have another submain, and here I have another submain. So VB.NET is not going to crib. So, but how it's going to determine which one is the entry point? Okay, so for that, we need to go to the project properties and pick the one. So under applications, uh, we need to pick the startup object. If you see, it listed out the uh, all the uh, modules which has this sub main as a member within it. Okay, so we need just need to pick the respect to one. And in this case, I'll, I'm going to pick the if else uh, code and save it. And I'll go to if else block. Okay, and I'll add a breakpoint here and start running it. It's good. So it it is running. It is uh, uh, coming to this particular code block. So what I'm going to do is do the same thing. I'm going to add a breakpoint there and um, say a number, right? Eight. So number eight. And here I'm going to do F10 to go to the next line. The first line got skipped. The second line got skipped. Uh, sorry, it skipped. And the third one, it's satisfied. And it found that C is a eight and it's a each digit is satisfied to true. And that's one else if this block is executed. And soon after that block is uh, executed, it finally uh, jumped to end if. And that's the end of the program. So only one condition will be satisfied and the respective things will be gone. Okay, I'll do one thing. Um, just to demonstrate that okay, multiple conditions, I'm going to say, copy this and also include this here and I'll say is it double one let me see if it is true yep yeah so this is end is lower so I'm going to check for both can that ever happen if a single one can be capital and also small so it can never happen. So what will happen? In that case, it's gone to the default block, which is the else block. So if none of the conditions matches, it's going to get into the else block, uh, which means uh, so the the character is not alphabet. So this is a wrong uh, example, but I'm just, just trying to demonstrate the else part. Uh, in other words, I can also demonstrate that uh, by giving a special characters. Okay. I'll put a special character percentile and then hit this and do an F10 and in that case so this the text that is displayed out uh, will be more meaningful um, that will be the character is not alphanumeric 
So another thing uh, that I just demonstrated is the uh, con uh, con multiple conditions here, uh, wherein I have two, condi two set of conditions here. Okay, um, so you can have an uh, um, ampersand ampersand as a end operator. So this is an end operator that you can use to uh, add more uh, conditions. And uh, similarly for VB.NET, I can take this off. If you want to add more conditions, it's plain English. It says end. Okay, and I will say C is equal to say S. Okay, so I can do this also. So if it is C is a capital S. In this case, I can do the same thing within the C sharp code to make it little meaningful. C is equal is so this is equal to is equal to is the comparison um, operator in C sharp. Okay, so is equal to is an assignment operator. Okay, so we are good here. So. So these are all part of the operators uh, that we covered in the earlier session. So we are making use of them. This is an uh, conditional, uh, sorry, end operator. This is an uh, equal to operator. So comparison operator um, that we're using here. So what I'm going to say here is is upper and is s, right? So I will say s, and will this satisfy now? Yes, it does satisfy the condition, uh, whereas it's a capital S and also it is uppercase. Okay. Good. So that's one thing uh, I wanted to cover. And also when you do a conditions like this, uh, C sharp and uh, VB.NET, uh, um, there is a, s a slight difference the way the conditions are handled. Um, if you see the bitwise uh, operations um, uh, like a true and true is equal to true and true and false so the, uh, the resultant based on the resultant uh, it does a kind of a short circuit uh, checks so that means uh, when it is an end operator uh, this is uh, referring back to the uh, bitwise operations uh, if you have uh, uh, covered in your computer science uh, uh, curriculum wherein uh, uh, the end operator versus the bit operators uh, if the bit is uh, true and true it is true and true and false is false false and true is false false and false is false so if you see the first line itself is a true remaining all is false so C sharp by default uh, it takes care of that so when I say when it sees an end operator it's going to evaluate the the left hand uh, expression first and if this is uh, true, then it will evaluate the second right hand side operation uh, expression also. Otherwise, it will not do. So it's like a short circuited. Uh, it will save time in evaluating the second statement in that context. So when it sees the first statement itself is false and um, it's an uh, AND operator, then obviously the second right hand side it need not evaluate because the resultant is always going to be false. So it's going to be short circuited conditional check that's uh, by default in C sharp. So when it comes to VB.NET, it is not. So the end operator will actually evaluate left hand side operation and also the right hand side operation and then apply the end operator on that. Uh, so the true and true is true, then on it will go on. So to make the short circuited uh, in VB.NET, the operator available is end also. So when you make it end also, um, this will make it short circuited. So end also in VB.NET is equal to ampersand ampersand in C sharp. Okay. So that's again related to the operators. I'm just trying to cover that. Okay, so we should be good with the if and else plot, if and else parts. Uh, we will move on to the next one. I hope none of you have any questions on that. If at all any, then drop a line. I will handle that at the end of the session. 
and the next uh, topic in this selection statement is a switch case. So a switch case is a pretty interesting and a very neat and uh, very uh, uh, high in performance um, side when it compared to an if and else. So switch case also can be used for the similar functionality such as if and else wherein you want to compare one of the value and just check that if the given uh, expression matches a given condition and based on the given condition you want to uh, do a certain tasks. So in C sharp uh, the, uh, the keywords used are uh, switch and case. Okay. Um, the syntax if you see on the left hand side here um, is only for the C sharp not for the VB dot. So VB dot it's like slightly different. So and since our focus is on C sharp so I'm not giving a syntax for vb.net here, but I'm giving a vb.net source code. Okay, so the switch is a keyword that we're going to use as similarly an expression. And uh, we're going to do a case, multiple case, and finally default. So this is pretty much equal to an if condition or expression, that, uh, and you're do, doing the uh, statement, and else if, so on, else if, and so on, finally else, right? So there is a key difference between if and else and uh, when will you go with if and uh, when will you go with the switch case. Okay. So if you look at the, just compare the previous statement. Okay. In this case uh, we have, uh, okay. So in this case what we have is if there is a condition and else if there is a condition, else if another condition. So the expressions are actually multiple expressions here. So in if and else if you can have, you can define a multiple expressions at every given point. Okay. And whereas uh, with the cell, uh, switch case, you have that expression only at the first. And the remaining all are like a case statements. So for example, in this case, uh, this uh, switch case is uh, given n. So you're com checking if the n, n is it's pretty much equal to if n is equal to 1 then do this and if n is equal to 2 then do this and so on. So you're actually comparing it. So in this case what happened is you're actually checking the uh, uh, the compar comparison um, comparative variable here only the first time. So you're not actually using the same n every time. So what that save you is the uh, the the compiler's uh, ability to go and re refer the respective variable multiple times wherever you are referring it. So if at all I say if n is equal to 1 then what happens is every time you are actually going you are asking the uh, the runtime to go to this uh, address in the n and get the value from there and then compare to this. right? So that's a kind of a repetitive action that you are trying to do every time when you are using n is equal to some value. So which is the case we did in the uh, if and else if. Uh, so switch statement is effective and more efficient because it's not going to do that hand, uh, multiple times. What it's going to do, it's going to get the value in n. Okay, so you're going to switch to n. So it's going to get the value from n and keep it in the um, uh, memory there uh, uh, at the runtime. And it's going to check that n with the respect to case statements. So it's, going, it's not going to go every time to the memory area and retrieve it and then check it. So it's the, for that reason, uh, switch statement is a very uh, economical and effective way to handle it uh, versus the if and else. And when will you go with if and when will you go with switch case? Uh, it's not every time you might uh, use the switch statement uh, as in case uh, uh, when we're doing conditional statements, like multiple conditions that you have. Uh, in that case, uh, switch case you might not use. Uh, you might still use it, but uh, in a different way, wherein you eva you have another local boolean variable or something, uh, and you can put that expression directly on and assign that output of that expression to that variable, and then add a switch on top of it. So there are workarounds you can use and uh, not use. Uh, in ideally, if you see uh, uh, the code wise, if you have n number of conditional statements that you need to match, uh, then switch case is uh, best option. And if you have uh, very few like if and else only, uh, there's no multiple end ifs or else ifs. If you have a very lengthy 
else ifs uh, like this if you think you have 10 different else ifs like this then it's definitely not recommended to go with the if and if and else if so it's always good to switch to switch case okay um, and uh, yes the code yeah and another key difference here with the C sharp and vb.net uh, with respect to the switch statement um, if you check carefully so every case statement it needs to a a jump statement this is a jump statement which is called a break uh, or go to so it's a pretty much like uh, you need to specify immediately after the case within the block where it needs to go um, so it, it doesn't going to fall over by default in C sharp so that's again a key thing so if you see the um, uh, text that's you can notice that the jump statement is required after each block so uh, including the last block where it, it uh, where it is a case statement or a default statement so unlike in C++ which statement C sharp does not support an explicit uh, fall through from one case label to another case label so it doesn't fall through so you need to even specify the um, the jump statements which are break uh, or go to to notify where the um, logic need to go which is a little cumbersome um, uh, compared to to vb.net so vb.net is pretty clean uh, with respect to the uh, uh, select case so it's very neat uh, if you see you see uh, select case uh, and a uh, variable there and case and and it will you no need to specify the jump statements here go to or break or whatever you can still give a break um, um, but uh, not required uh, whereas C sharp it is mandatory to give you give that I'm not sure why they did this way but uh, this is really not that uh, intuitive uh, to write a code so uh, see so and it's uh, straight away jumps to the next day, uh, case uh, if at all it's not going to match and it's going to finally do the case else block okay and here it is a default block uh, for else part and here it is a case else okay so we'll see a demo on this so as usual as we know C sharp program I need to comment the main block okay so we are at switch case right yep and uh, C sharp um, so in this case we are actually uh, similarly here uh, we have as uh, this pretty example is going to uh, pretty much like a, a restaurant wherein you pick the coffee size and based on that we are actually calculating the price of the coffee okay so in this case uh, one is a uh, the small size and uh, two is a medium and three is a large so here uh, just to demonstrate the go to uh, case and break statements uh, what I'm doing here is with the case two um, the cost is uh, 25 cents um, the cost here in the initial uh, is zero so when the case comes in so it's going to be 25 cents incremented for small and medium if you see both are 25 cents so how it is going to be different is uh, we are going to add the case 1 every time so and that's the reason for case 2 I incremented 25 and I asked to go to case 1 in which case it will go to case 1 and then increment cost by 25 cents so in that case it will be the cost will be for medium will be 50 cents and again when it cost for large will be 50 plus 25 cents which is 75 cents so that's what the logic here is try to demonstrate the go to case uh, and in the first case it's going to break break means it's come out of the uh, switch case okay so I'm going to select the small and hit enter and I'm doing a debug F10 and it immediately matched the first case and it next thing it's checked for the break and after soon after the break it came out of the switch block so this is the switch block open and close brackets so it's 
completely gone out of the draw. Uh, that's the uh, meaning of a break. Okay, and break is again, uh, uh, it's like a jump statement. Uh, we will cover the jump statements. There are a couple of more jump statements that are available. And uh, again, if the condition is uh, not zero, then we are trying to uh, put it onto the screen. Okay, so it's uh, it said it is going to be 25 cents. Okay, so if I rerun this program and uh, the second time, oops, where did it go? Okay, rerun this and the second time. Okay, if I pick two as an option, then we'll see what happens. So and uh, it went to the directly to the two. So uh, otherwise, if you see the compare, if you compare to if and else, what it used to do is it's going to check the first statement if condition evaluated, and if it is not true, if it doesn't satisfy, then it comes to the next else if, and again else if so on. If you see the debug, so where a switch is very efficient in, uh, in saying that it's evaluated it and it straightly jumped to the respective value, it didn't go to case one in either way. If you see that, that's a core difference. That's why switch case is going to be more efficient than if and else if, and you will choose uh, to use switch case when you have a multiple set of conditions that you want to do, okay? If it is one or two, it's fine. If and else is good to go, okay? And in this case, uh, again, go to case one. So it went to case one, and at this point, we have a cost got 25 cents, and it's, uh, if you see, plus is equal to an increment operator. We did use the same operator when we're using the delegates. Okay. So the operator actually got overloaded. If you see the over operator overloading, so this is a typical example of operator overloading. So base uh, um, plus is equal to operation is actually incrementing the mathematics based on the uh, operands, which are on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Uh, when the operands are actually a delegate and a method, it was actually adding that method to the delegate. So uh, that's a, uh, a typical example of an operator overloading. Okay, so break. So at the end, we have a cost as 50 cents, okay? So that, that's about 50 cents, which is good. And finally, um, number three, so it's going to pretty much do the same thing. Uh, in this case, uh, case three, and it's got incremented to 50 and go to case one, and that is uh, 25 cents added up and then break. So finally, we should see 75 cents. So that's a demo for this switch case and the um, comparison to the if and else if. So I hope you have clear with that. Uh, if you have any questions on this, just drop a line. I will quickly go back to the vb.net. So I'm in this case, first step I'm doing is set the startup project to vb.net and then come back to, okay, so switch case. So I want this to run. So I'm adding a breakpoint here. Okay, straight away running this. Okay. Okay, so what happened now? So it's actually executing the previous one, right? So I want to execute only the select case in this case. So what I'll do, I have to go to the project properties, pick the select case demo, okay? I just saved it and then come back here and run this program. And I see this program is getting executed, right? So in this case, we have one entered so again, this is again a good thing about uh, uh, VB.NET is that you don't need to actually give the breaks or the jump statements. Uh, literally speaking, the jump statements are, are not recommended to use, especially the go-to one. So go-to is actually a legacy uh, jump statement uh, which used to be used uh, in uh, VB6.0, uh, but not anymore. It's still there as a backward compatibility and it is not recommended to use because that can lead to a different uh, uh, side effects. 
So uh, it's not recommended to use, but still uh, in uh, C sharp, uh, it is somehow uh, for switch case, it is limited to have a jump statements. Uh, in VB.NET, it is pretty neat and clean. So there are a wide variety of flavors. You now people do argue about which one is better. Okay, people do argue C sharp is much superior than VB.NET, and in many cases uh, like this one, uh, VB.NET is much cleaner than C sharp.NET, and uh, and C sharp gains more weight when you really do a hardcore uh, hardware interface kind of applications um, like interfacing with um, uh, networking or um, the unsafe code we were talking about the pointers concept is still there uh, things like that so if you really wanted to do a programming at that level the C sharp is more uh, advantageous than VB.NET so VB.NET is more user friendly language in other words Okay, so in this case, I am not having any jumps. I'm straight away putting. I know if it is um, uh, small, I just it's 25, and if it is uh, uh, big, um, uh, medium, it is 50, and uh, if it is a uh, large, then it is 75. So I don't have to jump to case one and then come back here. Okay, so it is a uh, pretty pretty straightforward, and uh, the conditions, if you see um, the exit select is the uh, is a keyword that we can use as a, in terms of a break there so exit select uh, uh, so in, in all the vb.net uh, 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 language semantics if you see so you will see the end exit or common things right if for example if you have sub there is an end sub and there is a select there is an end select if there is a if there is an end if so on so the end is again a common thing that notifies the begin and end of the uh, your block code block and similarly uh, uh, so exit if you see um, because it's the select statement you have an exit select and if, if you see for statement then you will say exit for so on so you can use the exits uh, again a common uh, semantics when you go for loops like a while or do while loops then exit do or exit loop so on uh, so things are available like that Okay, so we are good here and uh, one last uh, run with uh, three as an input option and so it's behavior wise it's the same thing it jumps to the respective case and then runs your code. Okay, I hope you guys are clear with this and I'll switch back to C sharp code set as startup project and we'll move on with the next topic so this is what we had just demonst demonstrated so then the next one is the iteration statements so here the uh, the iterations uh, pretty much represents to uh, navigating through a set or a collection of uh, objects the iteration statements are completely related to the collections okay so uh, a number of items number of times you want to execute the program so if you compare with the switch and uh, switch case or if statements uh, only one time that a code block can be uh, visited uh, in a given run so whereas if you want to do it the same uh, logic repeat multiple times um, um, then you need to go with the iteration statements and the uh, in C sharp, we the first iteration statement uh, we are looking at is a do, and on the left hand side, so we have four different types of um, uh, iteration uh, statements available uh, in C sharp dot net, and VB dot net there are a couple of more. So since our focus is in uh, only um, C sharp, we are looking only at the C sharp and comparing the respective one with the VB dot net. Okay. Uh, so we have four uh, iteration statements. Number one is a do, uh, and the number two is for. Okay, and then next one is a for each in, and then while. Okay, so we'll see uh, uh, do first. So do statement executes the a statement or a block of statements repeatedly until the specified con expression or even evaluates to false. So this is a typical. Uh, it's a very simple. Uh, uh, syntax uh, it starts with a do no condition here uh, whereas a vb.net has a uh, uh, iterations uh, which will start even with a do while, do while to so on so in c sharp there is a um, do and then within the blocks you can put any number of statements 
and then while condition. So the expression, so while this expression uh, evaluates to true, keep on doing this do. So that's what it means. So uh, when the runtime comes into play, uh, how it's going to do is, whenever it identifies do, it's going to first execute the statement and then check the condition. And if the condition is still true, then it's going to go back and uh, execute the same block again. And it will do the same iteration um, till the expression is evaluated to false. So what this indicates is the, the statements within the do block uh, are guaranteed to execute at least once. So because there is no condition check uh, done when you're doing a do, right? So that means the statements will be executed at least once uh, regardless of what. So whereas if you see the switch statements or if else uh, only the condition if it is matched then it will be uh, executed otherwise no. So that's a difference. So you need to wisely choose when you want to use do, when you want to use for and so on. So we will see um, other cases also. Uh, typically in a real time examples uh, uh, do is usually used when um, uh, uh, when you uh, while handling the file operations um, when you're reading a large file so if you will uh, open a file and then try to read the content of the file and uh, uh, and the expression that you're looking at this point the expression is uh, the values or uh, that you're comparing uh, will be actually initialized in the do block so it's going to first open the file because if, if you want to read a file content first thing you need to do is you have to open it so you open the file uh, in the statements and then read the content out and you will see the uh, what uh, uh, if the file has something or nothing and we, or you want to do check or uh, search for a couple of a couple of keywords within the file and then uh, set a flag okay this is done so then based on the expression that you set within the statements you are going to uh, execute this one so in a typical case uh, it's a do whole thing till the uh, end of file is reached in a simple example right open a file and read the whole content line by line till it till the file reaches end of file so file has an uh, property called end of file uh, which indicates that you have reached the end of the end of the file and you're done so at that time you, you can use uh, do while similarly when you uh, when you uh, handle uh, any um, a database um, uh, operations also uh, in certain cases you can actually make use of do while. So a typical example, a good example is uh, handling a file operations or when you're reading a multiple files or file content in general. Okay, um, so yeah, so unlike the, if you see of course the while is a little far away, so unlike the while block, um, so the while is again a uh, condition comes first and then the do will uh, comes next so it's other way around so if you want to do a condition check first and then repeat it then you can use a while whereas a do is the option where you want to do execute the statements first and then uh, evaluate with the expression so in this simple example what we're going to do is uh, uh, we have uh, two local variables x and y and uh, y is getting incremented with the plus plus operator Okay, this is an increment operator. If I say plus plus minus minus is a decrement operator, plus plus is the increment operator. So whenever you see an you know, increment operator, what happens is the y value is getting incremented whenever this statement uh, is executed. Okay, so uh, then once you increment the y value, you, we are assigning that value to x. Okay, so just typically to demonstrate the operator and also the do while. So we're trying to mix multiple things here. Uh, otherwise, you can simply say uh, x plus is equal to 1 also, right? x plus 1 is equal to is a, typically means that you are incrementing x value. Um, so, and we are uh, writing the x value outside. And we are asking the while to check y is less than 5. So, do the whole thing till y is uh, less than 5. And that means we'll see values from uh, uh, 1, 2, uh, 4, right, because it's less than 5, 4 is less than 5. And then C, uh, in VB.NET, uh, it's the same code here, we don't have an increment operator, 
in uh, vb.net so there is no operator called plus plus minus minus in vb.net so so we are simplifying that by saying x plus is equal to 1 and we're just incrementing x and I'm not using a y here okay and uh, the x is outputted here and uh, we're checking uh, again here the syntax wise uh, do has a loop so do loop while x is less than 5 okay so we'll see the code okay so the uh, we so we need to comment this out first I'm sorry so we are this is a VB code I shouldn't be worried about it okay so the previous one we had was a switch case so let me take this off Okay, so I'm adding a breakpoint here. I'm running this program and we have this here. And as said, uh, the statement will be guaranteed to execute at least once. So in the first case, we have uh, x is 0. And y is already uh, y is already incremented to uh, one. Uh, it actually goes from left to right. So we see x. Uh, the value of y is not actually assigned to x because the original value of y is zero. So the zero got assigned, and the right hand side. Uh, uh, this is again uh, a demonstration to see how your uh, line of statements get executed. So. Um, so in this case, we, we, we see that incrementing is done after the assignment. So the assignment is done first and the increment is done later. Sorry. Okay, so in this case, we have uh, the original y value as 0 uh, got assigned to x and then y value got incremented using the plus plus operator. So that's a typical behavior of the your line of code execution. And then we're writing that zero out. And we're checking if uh, the y is less than five. So in this case, one is less than five is still true. So since this is true, how can I check that? I can simply select that part. I can simply select this part and right click and say quick watch. So you can evaluate that expression uh, in the quick watch also. Okay, and similarly, I can do that in my immediate window also. I can put a question mark and just put this and type in. It also I can also put a, as a value like this and also evaluate it. So it's a very useful tool uh, using the immediate window. Okay, and uh, here we go. So the uh, since the condition is true, uh, it iterates uh, till the condition comes false. Okay, so if you see the code block is getting executed as many times as the condition is not met. So we have values from zero to four. Uh, once the value of y got incremented to five, uh, it's uh, exit the do loop. So that's a, that's a very simple demonstration. So we will definitely see uh, these um, statements when we do a program. So when we do a big program, then we will see all these uh, small things uh, assembled together as a big program and um, we can demonstrate all of them in one. Okay, so going back to the VB.NET code. So it's again a pretty simple code and um, needless to forget, we need to set the startup program to do demo okay uh, and then coming back to do and set my start breakpoint there yep here also it's pretty simple so do while it's getting uh, um, incremented so 
return of the value is 4 and uh, 4 is less than 5 so it's going to increment for the last time and uh, once it is 5 it should be out okay it's done so here we got a different set of values uh, we have from 1 to 5 because here we are actually incre uh, incrementing the x value directly to 1 uh, in the other C sharp example we were actually incrementing the y after the assignment so it's uh, we're using an assignment uh, incremental assignment operator here plus is equal to so we don't see 0 here okay so behavior was a little different okay so that's um, about the do okay so the next one is for Again, for is um, again a very very useful uh, which you will be using almost uh, in any program. So do while probably you may use uh, very rarely only when you do file operations or unless you really need it. Uh, otherwise, the for is a very very commonly used. Um, so we'll see for, and for is a little lengthy and uh, it has a, a set of uh, uh, syntax wise if you see. Um, it has initializers, it has an expression, expression is pretty much a condition that you check and the um, iterators. So this will be um, uh, a whole set of things are included in one uh, statement. Uh, uh, like in the do while we were actually incrementing the x uh, in one place and checking that if in a, next, uh, in a while block and so on. So whole, all of that we can do in a for statement. Um, so if you compare uh, to the do while, so if you compare, I'm actually uh, creating a, a variable outside my do loop and incrementing my x value and then checking the x value to execute this uh, block. So all of this I can do it in a single statement which is using for. So wherein in this case what I do is I declare a variable and initialize it in the first set okay so if you go back a little up hope I can yep yeah good so this is a part of the initializer okay so wherein I actually declare a variable within the for loop and initialize it or I can declare this uh, variable outside it and also initialize it so pretty much it means initialize the variable and the expression so expression is to see if it is i is less than is equal to 5. So this is the condition. If As long as this is uh, not true, uh, it will be keep on iterating. And the iterator, which is incrementing operator. So you can actually put uh, any kind of incrementing operators here. It's uh, i plus plus or i plus 1 or i plus 2 at every time you want to step by uh, 2 or so on. So in VB.NET, uh, uh, we uh, have a, a very good um, incrementing operations uh, available um, like uh, step by two or so on and it is like uh, in this case uh, for it is very simple um, we are actually increment by default it increments by one uh, if you want to increment the value for two times like uh, you want to check only for even numbers for example two and next value should be four and four plus two six six plus two eight eight plus two or like that if you want to have a, a value of i then you can do that in one single loop. Uh, otherwise, by default, this is uh, one. And in this case, uh, I plus plus indicates that uh, you are incrementing by one value at a time. So you can actually put I plus two. You can actually do a lot of uh, magics uh, with this statement actually, and it is a very powerful uh, uh, statement that you can make use of it to do a lot of things. You can also uh, go with the reverse order also for example um, you you want to uh, you want to reverse a string for example and you get the uh, string la max length and uh, you start with the max max value and then come back to the small value in the reverse order in that case you initialize with the max value and then uh, do use a decrement operator here so there are so many things that you can do with the for um, statement uh, so to keep our session limited, so uh, we are doing only one way, a simple straightforward uh, happy path uh, using for loop. 
So it's all your creativity you can apply. Um, so programming is all about applying the creativity. You know that you can use that statement. Uh, but for the given situation, how best you can use it, you can actually think uh, your pseudocode in your mind and then apply your logic. So again, our C sharp as a startup project. And in this case, uh, the previously I was doing do. I have to comment this out. And uh, come back to for and uncomment this. Okay, that's cool. So, and there is one very interesting point here. I will show you at the end. Okay, so um, so in this case, if you see uh, the same thing again, uh, int i is equal to one, and i is less than five, and i plus plus. So we're going to uh, loop um, this block, this block, uh, starting from i one to i uh, is less than equal to. So it means five. So I will get one to five. I should get one to five. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. So we have one to five numbers printed out. Okay, so similarly, I can add a, a plus two condition here. I, I plus is equal to two. Will this take? Yep, now it is good. So I just put an assignment to increment to by two. So in this case, if you see, I got the um, the odd numbers, one, three, five. So it's so simple to get the odd numbers out. And similarly, if I want to get the even numbers printed, then all I need is initialize with two and say less than equal to 10 and uh, increment by two. So I can print the even numbers uh, up to 10. So that's a pretty simple uh, um, you know, uh, logic that you can write to print even numbers if someone asks you to print. Okay. So I will uh, show you the same thing uh, in uh, VB.N as well. And here again I will go back to project properties and set the startup project to 4. Um, I need not actually save this, but okay, so I'm going to go to for. So when I run the program, it automatically saves the project uh, and run. Okay, so here, um, uh, so VB.NET syntax is a little different, uh, wherein for is the same thing, it's, it's called as a for and next. Uh, here, we are declaring a variable and initializing it with one. And uh, this is a max value saying uh, up to five. We are not actually doing a condition check. It's actually a straight, straight away saying that uh, from one to five. Okay, by default, it's actually incremented by one. So what we're doing is uh, five. So if you want to um, do an increment, then you have a step two. So when I say step two, it gave me the prime numbers. So it started with one. And similarly, I can uh, print down the uh, even numbers the same way I did it in uh, C sharp by setting this to uh, zero, uh, sorry, two, to 10 and step by two. So I got the prime numbers out, okay? So that's the, difference uh, uh, between both languages syntax wise. We're going back to C sharp. Okay, so we're done with the for and next next comes the for, oh, did I miss something here? Yep, I missed a, a very interesting topic here. Uh, what I wanted to show you is um, uh, highlighting the um, the syntax here. If you see, uh, it's just specific to C sharp again. If you see, all of these three uh, are with the square brackets. So that means all of these are optional. 
So I can still use for without any of these. So what will happen in that case? It can be like this. Okay, so what will happen if I keep it like that? So that's a little interesting which is possible only with uh, C Sharp, not in VB.NET. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I will comment this out. Okay, uh, this will never be visited anyway. So this is going to go into an infinite uh, loop uh, with a never ending. So practically you might never use this uh, to my knowledge. If at all you, I'm not sure if what condition you might uh, use this. Uh, unreachable code. Okay, so the compiler is very smart. It says it's unreachable code because it already determined that you know, the code I have written above is not going to end in the near future. Not, not at all is going to be uh, reached. So the compiler is pretty smart. Good. Um, so when I do this, so if you see, uh, there is no initialization, there is no check, there is no increment. So all of them are optional. So what I'm trying to do is print optional. Okay. So to just do a better demonstration, uh, how many times it is getting invoked. Um, so I I'll, like to do an int i, and I uh, <coughs> and i. <coughs> Excuse me. I plus is equal to one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just trying to uh, show you how many times this is iterating. So this is uh, a kind of a hopeless statement. It's not going anywhere. Oops, because hmm. My read. Okay. Well, wow, interestingly, yeah, I value is always two because I'm actually declaring I. So it's a number of i's are getting declared. So what I do is uh, if I keep this outside, then this will make difference. So if you see, it's actually running forever. So, so far 20, 30,000, 40,000 times and it's an infinite loop. So because there is no initialization, there is no increment, there is no check, so it will not go into end. So it's always Cross, almost cross the hundred thousand. So we would like to break it now. <clears throat> so code like that is going to be uh, carefully written. Otherwise, uh, we will end up uh, with infinite loop. Okay, so it's not good to have. So I'll comment this out. Okay, so we're good here with uh, four. We'll go to the for each. For each is a special case, um, um, so very, very again a useful one. Uh, it's uh, similar to a, a do or for, uh, but this is uh, specific to uh, collections again, of course. Um, um, okay, so we will uh, come back to for each because we need to get introduced uh, to the uh, concept of arrays and uh, collections. So before we go to the for each. So for each is a, a good one now when we, when do we use it? When we're, whenever you see a, a objects uh, within a, a collection or a number of values within a collection or arrays. So arrays and collections we need to get introduced to before we get into the uh, for each. So we have a, a little deviation from the statements to uh, collections and arrays. Okay, so arrays are zero-based index. So what it means by zero-based index, so you, um, it's pretty much like what is an array. So array is a single uh, uh, variable that I can that can hold n number of values of the same type. Okay, so uh, it's uh, so that's what it, an array is. Uh, again, arrays again type safe. Again, you can have uh, once you declare an array of a specific type, you can have only that type of uh, value assigned to that variable. Okay, and n number of values um, to be specific. 
okay um, so in this case uh, these are uh, having an index so uh, it's pretty much uh, like uh, if you have 10 values within a variable uh, then you refer to each of the values within the variable using an indexer so that that index uh, uh, is a zero based index in uh, in the arrays in dotnet normally okay so we start with the single dimension arrays so in the single dimension arrays uh, this is how you declare so how do you declare we declare using uh, a data type it comes with the data type int and of course a variable name numbers and it's decorated with this the square brackets the open close square brackets uh, indicates that this is an array and especially important to know that this brackets need to be immediately following the data type so there is no space between them okay and not to the variable that's the key thing you need to remember. It comes along with the data type and the brackets followed by the name. So what this statement indicates that uh, you declared a variable array numbers of int type. Okay, so this makes the meaning, this brackets makes the uh, meaning completely saying there's an array. Otherwise, if it's a int numbers, it will be numbers of type int, okay? And if, when you see the brackets, you need to call it as an array of numbers of type int. So this is an array. Okay, so this is how you declare uh, the array and how do you initialize. Um, so in this case, actually, uh, I don't uh, re read as a continuation to the first one uh, because uh, you cannot redeclare the same name with uh, again immediately so in the second statement is trying to show you that uh, declaration and in initialization in the same uh, line so otherwise uh, uh, if you declare the uh, first statement then uh, the second statement should be from here okay from here when you initialize it so since uh, uh, read this uh, line as a uh, independent line so in this case where the de declaration and the initialization is happening in a single line um, so in this case we actually declared um, a numbers array of numbers of type integer with the size 5 okay so again remember it's the same new keyword if you see so new means it's a object okay and if you see, observe the carefully, we are using int here. Int is a value type, but we are using a new keyword. So you never declare uh, value types using a new keyword. So what this indicates is that uh, you're actually creating an object of type. Uh, it's an array. It's an array is an object. So syntactically, when we add up these uh, bra uh, brackets, it implicitly mean that you are declaring an array. So the compiler is actually creating an object array of type uh, int uh, with the values of type int and it's going to give us. So syntactically you're going to create um, this way uh, with int uh, curly, uh, sorry, uh, square brackets na name and using a new keyword and initialize it with the size 5. So 5 is the, uh, the dimension, the size of the uh, your array. So this, this indicates the number of indexes that it can have. That means 5 is a max upper limit. And the second, uh, third one, sorry. So third one uh, we are trying to see here is an assignment. So, so, so we have declared uh, array. So how do you, we add values to it? So we're using for statement which we just covered to uh, add or assign values to each of the uh, item uh, in the array so in this case uh, since we know the value like uh, in this case again I am using int as an indexer so here I is typically used for any number type of iterations which refers to an indexer normally so I uh, is starting with zero because your array is a zero based um, array um, and i is less than numbers dot length so numbers dot length will actually return your five okay so we are saying that i is less than uh, five that means it's it will always go to um, uh, zero to four 
okay zero to four means five elements right but we are not using the fifth block there actually in, in other words and we are incrementing i plus plus so that means we are uh, we are navigating from a first indexer to the last indexer and assigning the same number to it okay in this case i'm actually assigning the same i value to that indexer so this is how you read the respective indexed value i of uh, numbers of i okay so this is how you assign it and uh, while reading it's the same thing same iteration um, sorry okay so while reading it's the same uh, for loop only thing I'm doing is um, I'm just writing it to the output file and how I'm reading I'm reading using the numbers within the brackets passing the indexer i okay we'll see this as a demo single dimension okay so this is a single dimension okay for those who are actually um, might be uh, having little trouble in understanding uh, this I will uh, slice it down in other words so what we're trying to do here is uh, how we are accessing is number of I right so in other words um, I can do this way also okay I can do this is equal to 1 Is equal to say some value. No, it doesn't mean doesn't mean to be one or two. Okay, because it's an integer. We it will take only integer. Okay, that's the key thing to remember. There, otherwise, uh, you can put any value there, uh, any integer value. Okay, so this is how it means exactly. So to for those who are not clear with that uh, for loop and all. What we're going to do, do is this one exactly. Okay, so we still have five, right? Uh, I can go up to five. Okay, let's see if it, it takes it or not. No problem in trying it out. Oops, sorry. Okay, so this is exactly what the loop is also trying to do, except the value assigned to this is nothing but the same indexer. Okay. Uh, what I'll do is I will uh, take this off for now okay and uh, I will run this code okay there you go so the expected output so we're trying to uh, um, reach the fifth element uh, that means it is not available although you specified it as five okay so the reason here is this is what I was trying to show you um, so the reason is if you remember it's a zero base uh, index so it allocated five el five elements starting from zero so you have only up to four that means uh, zero one two three four okay. so the exception you normally see as an index out of range exception so this is the first time probably you, you are looking at the exceptions right now so we will be we are very close to go to the exception handling also so exception handling is also falls under the same uh, statements uh, so we will cover that also so down the line we'll see how to handle such kind of exceptions um, okay in the next session probably uh, so in this case um, if hope you understand when we have five as an upper limit we have zero to four okay so zero to four is available not the five because 0 to 5, 0 to 4 is total 5 and you have 5 elements only, right? So I will take this off and remove this line of code and now oops, it ran and disappeared. What I need is my read statement which is probably sitting at the last yep. Okay, so there you go. So the value at the indexer, so what I'm trying to put out. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is I'm actually iterating through the whole index starting from zero to the end, which is max length, which is five. That means i is less than five, means i will end at four. Okay, and uh, so all the values that I'm assigned, I'm reading, reading them out. So how it is reading? It is reading with the indexer i. Okay, 
So hope you are clear. If you still have any doubts with this, uh, then let me know. Um, drop it down, drop a line. So how we are doing is we are actually reading this. I will add a breakpoint here that might give you a good um, overview again. Okay, so this is pretty clear. So I'm actually assigning the value to the each of the um, indexer uh, for the number. So the number is an array uh, of size five of type int. So at, it can the same variable can hold five numbers from starting from zero to four as indexer. So how I'm doing is I'm reading the same values out. So in the first case, uh, i is 0. So what I'm doing is i is passed as 0. We are reading the i of 0. So I can make use of my immediate window here. I can say question mark and then say i of uh, number of i. Or I can also say 1. OK. And also I can pass in a number a respective index up there, which is 3. I got 40. So similarly, I'm trying to loop through with incrementing i and passing i to it to read the value out. Similarly, I'm actually using the same iteration and reading and assigning the value. Okay, so that's what uh, it is. Okay, so we are good there with a single dimension array wherein I able to save uh, one value at a time. Okay, I will comment this out. Uh, for your reference down the line and uh, I will use this statement. Oops. Okay, so in this case what I'll do is uh, I will uh, do one thing. I'll just change the value like i into i or i yeah, i into i. So I'm just assigning a multiplication of the i into i. Okay, so so that we have some different values other than the indexer. Okay, so in this case, I have 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, so on. So, so this is the indexer and this is the value at that indexer. So that's a single dimension array. Okay, we're good with the single dimension arrays and um, we'll go move on to this multi-dimension array wherein we have a two-dimensional array created here. So in this case, how will I create a multi-dimension array? It's uh, based on the comma. So you use the same uh, brackets with the square brackets and separate with the comma. That means you declare a two-dimensional array here. If you have n number of commas there, that means you have a multi n num nth dimension of an array you can create. You can actually create a pretty much like a table uh, with rows and columns. Um, you can do that way also. So any n number of dimensions you can create, you can create any number of dimensions there. You can see the how the assignment is done. In the single dimension we had only one for loop, wherein in this case we have two for loops because you have a two dimension here. The first one is on the, uh, here and the second one here. And the size of the first dimension is four and the size of the second dimension is five. How this looks like is, uh, hope I could draw a good, yeah, if you take a table like this, the first dimension um, uh, is four, for example, take them as a rows, one, two, three, four, okay, so these are the four uh, dimensions and the fifth uh, and vertically you have five, right, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, not bad actually. I could able to draw here. So this is the two-dimension array that we have created just now here. Okay. So with the four rows and five columns, uh, it's pretty much like a table. So imagine if you add a third dimension to it. So it could be like uh, you're creating a cube like this, you know, um, and it's going to be more complicated to handle when we go that that dimension like that. Okay. So it's pretty much a two dimension is uh, pretty uh, big enough. So today we'll see two dimension array. Uh, and in this case, it's the same thing. So I'm uh, ha having an outer loop, which will, which is iterating through the number of rows. In this case, four, four rows. So the first outer loop is actually um, managing to see the first indexer, uh, which is X. And the second, in, second one is in the uh, Y indexer. It's pretty much if you see X and Y coordinates on a graph, uh, on an X axis and a Y axis, if you see. 
and uh, if you say this is an X and uh, this is a Y and you pretty much you can hold the coordinates uh, using a, a two-dimensional uh, array. So if you can just declare a two-dimensional uh, array of type integer and you can actually uh, hold all the values within the two-dimensional array, uh, all the coordinates on the graph and uh, yeah, so two-dimensional array here, we are iterating through X and Y axis. So in this case, uh, uh, this is how you access the members. Uh, need just to elaborate that. Uh, so whenever you re refer to X as zero, so for every row uh, zero, this for loop is going to execute. So at a given point of time, uh, for X is equal to zero, the Y will be iterating from zero to four. So that means X is equal to zero. If it says this is a zero, and y will be uh, iterating to uh, 0 to 4, right? So the, you will be actually using this loop, you are actually looping like this way. This way, so 3, 4, and then your h reach the end, so this for loop will, uh, if will come out, it will exi exit because it reaches the fourth element there and it's, uh, the condition got false, and it will go to the next one. So uh, I, x will be incremented by plus plus, then it go to the second row and then same thing happens you will walk through the each of the grid like this and so on so that's how you are actually filling the two dimensional array and also reading the same thing using the same iteration okay clear okay so the output if you see here so it's pretty much that's what happening if it is a zero and y so zero throw uh, zero column, zero throw, first column, so on. So, and the value at the respect to zero and y uh, is added up there. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate that one. Now, before that, I will take away the um, single dimension to keep our execution simple. I will take this away. And I'm using the regions to identify. Okay, and this is the end region for my multi-dimension sample. Okay, so this is what the code here. I created a string um, um, names, array names of uh, type string with the two dimension and initialized the dimensions with 4 and 5. And here I am actually uh, walking through 4 and 5, uh, 4 rows and 5 columns and uh, assigning the values to each of the cell. It's pretty much like a spreadsheet. If you see a Microsoft spreadsheet, we are actually pretty much doing like a spreadsheet there wherein the X and Y uh, are your cell coordinates and we are assigning, uh, I'm actually pretty much putting the same uh, x and y value as a string. I will make it a real string by adding a concatenation here, okay? Or I can actually put a comma, that will be more um, more better I think, okay? Either way, I can put anything there. Uh, and I'm reading the value out using the same uh, two for loops. Okay, so this is what uh, the value at zero zero is zero comma zero um, that I just put, and I can put any string there. It's a pretty because it's a string. I can put anything there, so I can put any names and all. So this is pretty much like a table, uh, a relational level table wherein I have a rows and columns, and this represents the row and column. And also you can re read that as a x and y coordinates or whatever you think best fit there. Okay, um, and these are the values within the two-dimensional array. Okay, so similarly, I can actually go and create a third dimension also. It is possible. You can actually uh, have a third dimension also. Uh, how to do that? It's pretty simple. All I need is to extend uh, another comma here. Okay, another comma here. And I will add another dimension, third dimension there. Okay, and what I need to do is I need to add another for loop which will iterate through that uh, dimension x, y, now I have a z here, z is equal to 
z is less than 3 and it's a z plus plus and x y z right it's pretty simple and, uh, and now I will actually want to change something here put a hyphen there okay okay good in copy paste so z here it's good I compile the code it's scribbing that I have something wrong with the code yeah but here when I add this I need to do the concatenation oops when I'm reading out that's where it is scribbing okay huh. because there's no loop here Similarly, I just have to rename this to Z, Z, okay. Yeah, if you know the fundamentals and if you already have any existing code, then it's very easy to uh, manipulate that. C sharp is case sensitive, so somehow by mistake it was capitalized and we are good now. Okay, so that's the third dimension I added up and let's see how the output is the output is actually broken index was out of uh, bound of array okay so in oops my for loop that's the errors you normally need to wait and see for when you do a copy paste so when I do a copy paste I also have to make sure that I change the values accordingly okay so since the third dimension is only three I was trying to use the fifth, uh, fourth one so the um, uh, it, it failed with the error. Okay, so this is what, um, so I didn't change the value output here, so that's why uh, I still see the uh, two coordinates, but otherwise the value wise, uh, I have the third one. I'll fix that as well to see the third option since we are here. Okay. Where is it? So this is where I'm writing out. At that place, I need to just add the third dimension also here uh, with two and this is going to be three. So I'm going to put Z here and that's all it needs. Okay, so, so this is what it is. So you have zero, zero, zero coordinate, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero two and so on. So, so um, this is a three dimensional array values that I can have. I, I think mathematics wise if you know the permutation and combinations um, uh, you might have done some mathematical program, um, calculations. Uh, it's pretty much like permutation and uh, combination. How many, how many rows you can have is pretty much like uh, um, uh, your dimension, multiply your dimensions and you'll see a number of rows that you can fit into, a number of values that can fit into in this case uh, uh, 5 into 4 into 3 which is uh, 5 was uh, 20, 20 into 3 that's 60 right if my, my math is correct then that's correct okay so we have 60 values there 60 placeholders to hold in that three dimensional array and uh, yes the last one is the jagged arrays so this is a pretty interesting so jagged arrays is a combination of uh, uh, multiple arrays like you can have arrays within an array um, so it's more complex than a two-dimensional or a, a multi-dimensional array so this is kind of uh, adding arrays within an array you can actually if you see that there are two brackets here right so each of them is a array of its own so each of that array can be a single dimension or a multi-dimension and at the same time we can have uh, array of arrays so this is an array it is holding two arrays here okay so the typical example uh, one of the good example I um, have here um, is trying to demonstrate with the byte okay um, so the, if you if you see what is a byte a byte is a, a bit we are actually uh, creating a byte is this is a data type and it is a whole it is a array of its own this is an array of type uh, byte and within this array we are actually creating an array uh, with a variable dimension here 
Okay, if you see the size is variable here because it is dependent on the value of i. In the first case, if it is 0, then 0 plus 3, that is uh, dimension is going to be 3 and uh, third, uh, so on, it's getting incremented. In this case, if you see the length of the row. Oh. So the first row, um, the first dimension we actually uh, declared with the uh, length of 5. Okay, so this dimension, first dimension uh, has a length of 5. That means it can hold, it has a uh, 5 placeholder starting from 0 to 4. Okay, and the second dimension we are actually adding an array uh, at the runtime by creating another array which is a variable in dimension which is uh, uh, which is again a single dimension array uh, with a variable size. Okay, so each each placeholder is having another array here. So that's what the output is going to show. So that's why the length of the row in the first row it has uh, another array with of size. Three. If you see, we are actually reading the uh, the size of that array out. Okay, so we will demonstrate this code. So it might look like a fuzzy logic once you understand uh, it. It won't be anymore. Okay. Okay. Let's. Uh, so this is the same code we have here. We are actually adding uh, another new uh, array uh, at runtime to the respective placeholders here. Okay, so this is a jagged array wherein we have an array within another array. Okay, so this is another array that is adding up to the current array. So this is the length of the first row is three and so on. Okay. I hope that's clear um, and um, you can do again a lot of wonders uh, with these kind of uh, uh, logics. If you see any typical um, uh, scenarios someone asks you to implement then you can think of uh, you know that, that uh, covers a lot of um, um, range of values and things like that. So these are going to be very very useful. Um, Yes, in this session 13, we did start uh, looking into the statements in C Sharp and also comparing to VB.NET. Uh, and in this session, we did see the selection statements, uh, uh, especially the if, else, and else if in uh, C Sharp.NET and if, else, else if, and end if in VB.NET with a very good code example. And uh, another selection statement, uh, we did see a switch case and, uh, in VB C Sharp.NET and also the select case in VB.NET. And we did also jump into the iteration statements such as do, do loop in VB.NET uh, and we'll see we also saw the for uh, in C Sharp.NET and for and next in VB.NET. Uh, iteration statements and we did see for each statement in VB.NET as well as for each in uh, VB, uh, sorry, for each in C Sharp.NET and also for each in VB.NET. Uh, and also we did see the arrays, uh, how can we declare them and what are the arrays? Uh, well, how can we declare them using the square brackets and uh, you know, declare them, initialize them and assign them and read them. All this with a very good demo. And we did see what is a, a multi-dimensional array, how can we declare them, initialize them, assign them and read them. And we did see what is a jagged array, an array within another array uh, and how significant it is uh, to use and with a very good demo. Okay, so in the next session we will continue with uh, the initialization or uh, in the initializing the arrays at declaration and for now uh, we'll wind up this session and we'll continue with the next session.